his life was in such danger and he knew they, whoever they are, were coming for him. Like, why didn't he just get away for a while? Just go away. I'd want to I'd wanna ask him that, I think. I'm Kingsley Benadir and I'm here with British GQ breaking down the roles of Malcolm X and Barack Obama. What was specific about Malcolm's accent? There's a, a flat Midwestern sound mixed with like a southern. He has a really interesting tone that there is something about that Midwestern sound. I'd never, I'd never studied that accent before. Depending on where he was emotionally and how he was feeling, his, his sound and his rhythm and his cadence changed depending on his mood. And in some of those big speeches, some of those like famous fiery speeches, you know, he's at his most, yeah, his accent's very different. This will be an organization that will give the black man in this country the right to defend himself. It will encourage him to, to defend himself and it will teach him how to defend himself by any means necessary. Every morning, or at least on set, there were three speeches that I was like listening to on loop, and they were all him sort of in varying emotional states, and <laughs> I'd sort of repeat them to myself at varying volumes, depending on what the scene required, sometimes to the annoyance of the, uh, my other cast members. But yeah, I miss, I miss the accent. There's an interview of Malcolm speaking at Berkeley. That was like my main source because there's something about the progression of the conversation. Yeah, just the emotion and the dialect and like his personality and his tics and his movements and how he, how he sat and how he talked and how he listened. And there was so much of his character I feel like I discovered him watching him when he was listening. There's another speech that I listened to a lot, which was Malcolm in LA after some, one of the brothers from the Nation of Islam was shot and he did one of his most famous speeches in LA, I think 1962 or three. So it was just, yeah. And there were, there were parts of that speech that were constantly being repeated on set, like constantly. Oh, I just do that anyway, because I've so animated with my hands, apparently. Uh, apparently. Malcolm, he flicked a lot. You notice he, there was a certain, there's a kind of loose, there's like a gangliness about him. There's he's kind of, he do this a lot. And this and that and, yeah. He's, he's super elegant. You check out that Berkeley interview, it's, uh, it's really stunning. He sort of reveals himself as a bit of a genius. The way he handles like argument and debate, just how he listened and just supremely articulate and just so educated. You'll find that oftentimes Negroes are as much on guard uh, around Negro interviewers who usually represent the bourgeois uh, element of Negroes as they are on guard around whites. No, I went in with quite a strong idea about what his journey was and what each scene kind of needed to be within a framework. Yeah, we played around each day and like Regina always came in with incredible ideas. You know, the days became really fun because you're like, oh, I got this idea, she's got that idea and then we'd sort of combine our ideas together. But whenever you get to the end of a shoot or always on the last day or like a flood of ideas will come in about what you should have done, what you shouldn't have done and all of that. Oh man, don't. I got so many questions, man. There were so many things. I would have asked him like, why, why didn't he just get out of America for a while? And his life was in such danger and he knew they, whoever they are, were coming for him. Like, why didn't he just get away for a while? Just go away, you know. I'd want to, I'd want to ask him that, I think. It was, difficult to find video footage of Malcolm moving through a space. He's always either an interview or standing on a podium, so it's very difficult f sort of finding any footage of him like moving around. And with Obama there was lots of footage and I think there's, there's a coolness about him as well. He's just loose. He's loose and cool and yeah. Physically their builds were both quite similar, so the way that they moved through space Felt quite similar. Cool, he's cool. My mum was cool. I'm thinking this, this guy moves like he's cool. Yeah. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I knew going in, and it was kind of part of the challenge as well, I think Obama felt much more like a puzzle because Obama's probably the one, one if not, like top five most recognizable voices on the planet. So there was quite a lot of pressure to try and get that right. There was a, there was an interview. There was an interview of him before he was president. And it was just a, a two minute sort of conversation that my dialect coach suggested had all of the most important sounds that we needed to focus on. These things have to move on parallel tracks. We do, if we want to solve the problem permanently, have to have peace talks in place. There's something considered about him. He takes his time, so grounded, so calm, so direct, so confident. And then I'm sitting there with Jeff Daniels and I'm 20 years younger than Obama. Do you know what I mean? So it, was, it took a while to like, to adjust to that. I'd love to come back and play him in my late 40s. <laughs>